Hello viewers all over the world. My name is Chris Annie and I'm your host again, business leader of the week right here on Daba TV. I'm sure you enjoyed the last episode and I promise that this episode will be mind-blowing. I have here with me an award-winning entrepreneur, a startup investor, a gifted writer and there's so much to be said about him. I have here with me Chino Sobogu the CEO of Sabi Writers. Chinosu, so good to have you. Same here. I'm honored to be here. I'm, I'm super excited because this is the first time I am seeing Chinonsu. This is the <laughs> first time we're meeting. And this is the first time, okay, we're seeing face to face. But the truth is, I've known Chinonsu for years. And I told you I was going to start this conversation I by shocking you. I hope you don't put the rug on the <laughs> <laughs> I've known Chinonsu since I was... Living in Enugu. Mm. <laughs> wow, really? I've read one of your books, which you wrote with. You compared several entrepreneurs. Okay. And it's like uh, one kind of big book. I I've had when you were on radio. Really? Uh, what was those um, radio stations in Enugu? The, uh, you I used to host some kind of um, business talk. Yeah, I had, yeah success matters. Success, uh, yeah. exactly. I've had you on radio before. Ah. I've, I knew where you moved from, either from Orca then to Lagos. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. So I'll follow the entrepreneurial journey. Okay. So, Chino, so you're going to tell us, you're going to tell the audience, so I don't be the one start spitting it out. Ah, hey, as well. Uh, I told you I was going to, and I'm sure this is the I, first I, time I'm Honestly, I didn't know. I actually thought we knew from you Facebook. Know, Facebook, but the part of Enugu, I need not. I think it was when I was reading your profile that I realized that you were actually once a resident of Enugu. Yes. But I didn't know. Yes, because I schooled uh, in this. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, so let's start this conversation with you sharing your entrepreneurial journey. Okay. How did you get into the old entrepreneurial scene? And how has it been? <laughs> First, I want to say a very big thank you to you and your team for inviting me to this um, amazing, amazing platform. What you thank have you. here is huge. Thank you. Um, to the question, my journey, anytime I tell the story about how I started and how I've transitioned to where I am today, there's always this emotional part of me that feels like, you know, almost tearing up because mm. It's actually very emotional. So I read, I read banking and finance in my first degree. Um, growing up, I always wanted to be a banker, so I did banking and finance. But by the time I got to the third year, I've lost interest. Hmm. So I told my parents then that I, I remember calling them. I used to live with my parents um, in a one-room apartment in Ajegule. Wow. Okay, for those who don't know where Ajegule is, the ghetto side of Lagos, <laughs> Nigeria. So I called them this particular evening and my dad and my mom and I said to them, I, I don't want to be a banker anymore. And they were shocked. They, they were like, okay, so you mean the four years plus your IT five years that you spent in school were all wasted? I said, no. So what do you want to do um, this time around? I said, I want to be a public speaker and running trainings. My mom and dad are not quote unquote learned. So they really don't understand the career part of being a public, a public speaker. speaker. So yes. my mom, I remember her you know, paraphrasing what I said by asking, um, in hindsight, it, it, sound, it would sound ridiculous, but it could tell how taking her back she was. She yeah. asked me, oh, excuse me, let me understand you. You mean you will just be talking and people will be paying you money? <laughs> uh, and I laughed, I said, yes, so that's what you want to do with your life. She's, I said, yes, and well, they said, okay, since your son will pray for you, wish you well, and then that was it. So they prayed for me and then I moved to Enugu to to go start off. I was running a company in Enugu um, for three, four years, but nothing was really working. That mm -hmm. was when I, I then started my radio program on three radio stations mm -hmm. airing across 12 states mm -hmm. um, called Success Matters. Okay. I was inspiring people every Monday, Wednesday, and I mm -hmm. think Friday, you know, yeah. so, but, you know, back home, when I go back home, you know, I was faced with Poverty, I couldn't mm. fend for myself, nothing was happening mm. in my life. I remember one day my mom came to Enugu to visit me and she walked into my house and she started crying. Wow. And she asked a question in the Igbo dialect. She said, um, Chinonso, oye bag Igbo. And in Igbo, if I translate it in English, it means, Chinonso, is this where you really? live? I know such kind of question does not demand an answer, it's only a question born out of you know, surprise, mm. you know, 
worry and you know you know she was just you know completely knocked off by the the level of deprivation I was going through in Enugu and she started crying cut a long story short I stayed for you know in Enugu for about three four years at some point I had to say you know what I had only 700 naira in my bank account wow. and that was the you know I had 1700 1000 naira was the minimum balance and 700 <laughs> you know so was, you can't even take away the 1000 so what i did you know there's a difference there's a difference between you withdrawing small money and you depositing small money the level of embarrassment is quite different <laughs> when you are depositing small money the embarrassment is not there you can walk into a bank and deposit 300 naira but if you go into that same bank and so ask them to give you 300 <laughs> you know it sounded somehow so what i did was i brought um, 300 naira from somebody. Jesus. I went into the bank, you know, paid in that money, and then went to the ATM to and to collect 1,000 naira because that was all I could assess. And I remember on the 1st of October 2014, I packed my bags, gave out the little properties that I had, and I, I kissed Enugu you know, goodbye, at least at that time. Mm. And I, you know, relocated back to my family house in Ajigule. And you know what it means for a first son mm. who left home three, four years ago, you know, and having told your younger ones that you were going to make it, and three years, four years after you're coming with nothing to show for it, it was quite embarrassing. Mm. And this, I wasn't coming back to a, to a three-bedroom flat. I wasn't coming back to a bungalow or a duplex. I was coming back to a one-room so apartment Ajigule. in Ajegule. And guess what I brought back with me? 12 big Ghana must go loaded with books. And you're coming back to your home. And I remember I arrived in Lagos around 12 midnight. My dad was at the park waiting for me. He took me in. My mom had already rearranged the house to accommodate my, my, my yes. load and everything. I got to Lagos. I was knocked off because I, I, I was exhausted. Life had beaten me blue black. Mm. I was rushed to the hospital. I know there's this thing about when you get to the hospital and the, the, what you eat in the morning and afternoon and night is not your problem anymore. In the morning, you bring rice and chicken. Mm. You eat as a sick person, right? Yeah. And then I just felt like, man, they shouldn't discharge me. I should just be here and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> man. So it happened that way. After a while, I got fine. And then I, life said, you know what, come back for round two. Mm. So I remember I started asking myself at that time, why did I fail? I remember I would go to church, I would be crying. My mom would, you know, we're Catholics, so my mom would go to, you know, when your case, in, in, for those of us who are Catholics, when your case is taken to Blessed Sacrament, you know that the case is serious. <laughs> so my mom used to take my case to Blessed Sacrament. She would cry, she would fast, she would pray, and, and all she was just asking God is, please mm. help my first son. Mm. You know, I would cry, I would say, God, what is really going on? I'll try this, you know, it didn't work. And then I remember somehow I started doing some training here, some things here. I started squatting with a friend somewhere around um, Bagada. I was managing, he gave me a dex and a table, then we moved from there to Gudu. I was just doing things, you know, scrambling, anything I, you know, I found yeah, at that time. I would trek from Okbebi, from the beginning of Okbebi, down to the end of Okbebi, looking for, you know, any company that would just hire me to do mm. anything, whether it's training, recruitment, whatever. Mm. I just needed a break. Mm. And then I'll, after doing that, I'll go to Toyin Street in Ikeja, I'll walk the whole of Toyin Street, and then I'll go to Allen Avenue, do the same thing. And then I remember going to First Stack. I'll, I'll just be going around the city, you know, the, the axis of First Stack, and I'll mm. be writing different names of hotels that I'll visit the next day. You know, it was that crazy, man. So eventually, I got a break. Okay? Uh, back then, I would be working from cyber cafes. Mm. So I would go to a cyber cafe with my laptop, and I would give the guy, he used to charge me 15 naira for one hour. Mm. So I would give him like 300 naira and say, you know what, I need six this, this six hours yeah. to just, you know, and then I would stay in the other corner with some guys that would come to cyber cafe to do yahoo yahoo and things like that. <laughs> Uh, I remember one day I was just walking in the cyber cafe and there's this young guy that was doing the thing just by my side. I looked at him and I called him. I said, oh God, this time, this is the way they use your, this brain way they use it, talk to this person. If you use them, um, make, more, make more new. I remember that day, you know, so vivid in my mind. So eventually I went for this conference and while I was there, 
and the conference was held at Terraculture. Mm. While I was there, they had this you know, panel of women, women entrepreneurs who were invited to say some things about building businesses. And there was this woman that was just speaking so well, you know, among the entire speakers that they invited, mm. she was the one that resonated well with me. And that was the, the wife of the CEO of SoFresh. Mm. Um, SoFresh is one of the leading you know, natural food juice company in, in Nigeria. Yeah. It's over, I think they are doing about 20 outlets now, I can't can tell. And then after that conference I met her, I said, oh, Ma, I like the way you spoke, you know, my name is Chinon, so, you know, you know, you know when hungry beat you, <laughs> the, a certain level of networking skill will, <laughs> will just, you know, come out of you. And I met her, she looked at me, she saw a young man that was hungry, mm. and then she invited me to her office, like, oh, I like you, I like your spirit, come over and come see what we're doing at um, so Fresh." <laughs> yeah. So I went, she eventually introduced me to her husband, cut a long story short, they signed the one-year deal with me for me to train their entire wow. employees. And that was the big break wow. I had. Wow. wow. So from there, I moved out of my, my parents' house. I rented my own apartment. You know, just it kept on happening that way. Mm -hmm. Eventually, um, I did some other things that didn't work. Eventually, the idea of Sabi Writers came. Mm. Um, I remember Sabi Writers was not the thing. Mm. at the early stage. It was one of the things. Mm. But it eventually turned out to be the thing. So I was doing a couple of things, just trying to figure out the puzzle, the one that will unlock the chest. And Sabi Writers became that thing. And that's when and, we uh, need to yeah. come in. There. <laughs> because this, this, this is a journey on its own. Yeah. From the little lesson, we can say entrepreneur is a journey. It's not something you just wake up one day and you see you can just fix and fix and fix. Several failures and all that. Mm. What inspired Sabi Writers? I think Sabi I've always had this, I, I won't say, I won't, I won't call it passion, I'll call it flair. Mm. And also competence for writing, just sharing my voice. I remember when I was doing my, um, my service here in Calabar, mm. I used to write for, um, they call it Cross Copper, the mm. news, the new NYS newsletter, mm. and I would write different things entrepreneurship, business, motivation, self-leadership. I was just writing on, I think, weekly basis. So mm. I've always had that flair and interest and competence in writing. I'm, I would say, by the special grace of God, I'm gifted in that regard. But I didn't know that there could be, there could be a, an economic expression of that, not until later on. So I was having a conversation with a friend sometime around 2017. She, she wanted to write a book. She was based in the UK at that time. And she kept on telling me how she has been struggling to write this book. She doesn't have time. She's very busy. Mm. You know, she doesn't know how, in fact, she procrastinates. Mm. So I told her, okay, this, let's do this. I want to be your accountability partner. You, let's draw up a, a timeline, timeline and okay. things that you need to do to get this thing done. And I'll hold you accountable. I'll give you assignments when you should get this thing done and you ensure that you stick to that. She said, ah, that's a good idea. So we started. But this is what I, I realized something down the road. She kept on struggling, even mm. when I s proposed that I should stand in as an accountability partner for mm. her. So I'll give her an assignment. I'll say, okay, you know what? I need you to complete this number of words or this chapter by this time two weeks later. And then I'll come back two weeks later and I'll ask her and after she'll tell me. So I know what I did. I said, okay, you know what? Since you are still struggling, why not you tell me what you want to write? then let me do the writing for you. Hmm. I said, no, you know, so, so you have this idea, no even tell me since. <laughs> I said, okay, now let's do it now. So we started. She would tell me what she wanted to write and then I would do the right. And think, the, the next thing we noticed was the project started progressing at a, you know, increased pace. And that was when it struck me. I said, you know, there are a lot of people who are having this struggle. A lot of people who are having it. You know, sometimes what I've realized about entrepreneurship is discoveries are not usually made at the beginning of the line. True. It is made down the road. True. You know, that's why a lot of young people, sometimes they want to stand at the beginning of that line to mm. figure everything mm. out. Mm. And they keep struggling. They keep telling they don't have inspiration. Mm. You, clarity does not always begin so at sweet. the beginning. Yes. Clarity doesn't always begin at the beginning. Lesson, the lesson from this word you just said, you were busy working. Busy doing something, okay. One person's problem means that be one thousand 
people like that who have the same problem. Mm. So from what you just did now was you took someone's problem and now had to solve the same problem on a global scale, on a different scale. Because today, Sabi Writer is one of the leading or the leading writing agency in Africa. In short, I did not know okay. until I know people, I know ghost writing happens. I know people write for or I have not personally seen a writing agency. I have seen social media. <laughs> I've seen different agencies. But when I saw Sabi Writers and what you were pulling with it, and the thing that struck me was, okay, Sabi Writers, yes, it's been growing, it's been growing. And the next thing, you see the number of staffs working. I'm like, this guy has gone from taking what ghost writers will do on a one-man business thing, and now you're now taking that thing to several people solve, you're helping several people solving it. So a time will come, it could be 1,000 clients, 10,000 clients, and the agency is all over Africa, all over different parts of the world. The big lesson for the viewer is this. Take one small problem. That small problem you're solving. Mm. Just, I, I, I could draw like three, four business lessons, but let me share the ones I can catch. One problem, one person's problem could be a business for you. Absolutely. One person's problem. If you could solve it for one person, it means you can solve for 10 persons. If you can solve for 10, you can solve for 100. And if you can solve for 100, you can even do for a million. And ideas, like Chin also said, don't even start at the beginning. You must be doing it either rough, somehow, in the place of your work, to get something that will help you go to the next phase of either your business or your mm. entrepreneurial journey. Mm. Okay? So these are the things you've got to know. And also, that thing you're calling a flair. Because, man, if I'm to talk about the person who writes well on Facebook, sometimes I ask my wife, like, how is she not so writing all these things? <laughs> if, well, just watch. When we're done with this session, <laughs> I know where you're going. When we're done with this session, she also will write it. And I'm like, I don't even have the strength. Oh, I love okay? it. I don't even have the strength of how do you. All of us, she also will tell you how he came inside from <laughs> this door. He will describe this studio, and you'll be like, Is this not the studio that I've been working in for how many as months there, now? Okay, so <laughs> that thing that looks like a flare, yeah, he said it may not be the passion, but it's like he it has this thing, he could do this thing so easy. That's the same thing. Somebody yeah. who is talented, you could turn your talent and monetize it, and it's a big business for you. You know, so great one you have there. Mm. Now, I, I want to I want you to inspire our audience. Okay. You started Sabi Writers. I've seen the picture. I want them to see it. I want you to say it. <laughs> and you've grown to more than you, you have a number of staff. You can see it on the screen. But I want you to show, give us. You started where with Sabi Writers? I think uh, anytime they ask us about the journey of Sabi Writers, I always tell people that Sabi Writers is a company that is built by young people. Mm. Um, I'm only my, I'm only a tiny aspect of the puzzle or you know the the equation. So yes, Sabi Writer started from my bedroom actually. So when I moved out from my family house, I rented an apartment and we needed to start something. Mm. Somehow, I had a you know I, I wasn't married. I had a bedroom. I had a sitting room, and I said it doesn't make sense for me going to rent an office. An office. Besides, I couldn't even afford one. Mm. So we started from my bed in my bedroom. I bought a chair. I bought two, I think, three or four tables. You know, and I remember I posted something on Christmas Day, um, 25th December 2017. And on that day was when myself and my co-founder Felix hmm. and our first employee were in the office on Christmas Day while you know people like you were in your house <laughs> enjoying you know eating rice and chicken, and we were in the office working out the pl planning and putting the final touches for the launch of Sabi Writers in January. Hmm. And I posted that picture on that same day, 25th December 2017, on Facebook. Wow. And wow. all hell broke loose. Wow. People were all, you know, after me that this is not entrepreneurship. You know, allow your staff to go and rest. <laughs> you know, this is inefficiency. It means that you didn't plan. And I started laughing. Oh, right? Yeah. You don't but know my journey. We're hungry. We're hmm. hungry. You know, I'm, I'm so blessed by the co-founder that I have who understands, who is willing to roll up his sleeve. I'm, 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 I'm even going to go to that side. Yeah. You've seen companies have, you've seen people start up, founder, co-founder. 
what has been the role of that guy? Because you've celebrated <laughs> him a lot. How has, how has his, his impact, his impact in your company? And, and with that, I know he, 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 has, he, has, he has had great impact in your company. Absolutely. How would you advise someone who needs a co-founder? Or who wants to? Do you just start a business and go after a co-founder, or because I saw where you upgraded him, he was there with you from the start, from operations and elevated to the status of co-founder. What's your advice for anyone starting? Um, I think like there's no one size fits all. Mm. I've seen people post on social media um, advertising that they need a co-founder. Mm. Maybe it works for them. Maybe it doesn't. Mm. I really don't know. But. Um, they have their own different contexts. Mm. But for mine, Felix and I have known for over 16 years. Oh, interesting. So that for, on its own is part of the keys to our success. Mm. Right? So we we're, we're, went to the same school, same school, year one, year two, we're not that close. And then we went for IT, that was when we got close and we lived in the same house. Mm. Right? And that was where we started building the relationship. By the time we got to year three, I wanted to, you know, start up something like what we're doing now, you know, a student entrepreneurial organization mm. back then in college. And he joined me and together we built that one laurels for our school, mm. you know, went to Abuja, did so well, went to Lagos, the same thing. So there's a track record of working with him both in terms of competence and in terms of loyalty. Mm. Loyalty, so even competence. Though, even though it could be contextualized for different people on when you should get a co-founder. Mm. There are certain things that are foundational. Interesting. One of which is whoever that is going to be your co-founder must pass your test. Must whoever pass. must be your co-founder must, must pass, pass your test. You must put them to test. Yes. Is either you consciously put them to test or life itself takes them through a certain mm. journey with you and mm. life tests them and you can see that you know, they are scaling through. So Felix is someone that has gone through life with me and we have gone through different tests and he has always passed. So when I wanted to set up Sabi Writers, there was no other person that could join me in the journey. Let me tell you something. When we started Sabi Writers, you know, he was not earning the dime. I was not even earning the dime. In fact, he was using his personal phones to run the company, right? Who does that? Hmm. And I remember then he was not married. He would, I would keep selling the vision, selling just the dream. I didn't have any money. Nobody was financing us, but he believed. And he's someone that puts the collective goal ahead of his personal goal. Mm. So that's another test. So whether you are advertising on social media or you, you, know, you have been friends with this person, don't get somebody on board as your co-founder and stick to that without subjecting that person to certain tests that the person must pass to gain your trust. We will soon go on a short break. Before we do, uh, I want you to, while you're watching via YouTube or anywhere, uh, list out the requirements that Chinon so used. <laughs> and list it out. List it out on the comment section. I want to see it on the comment section. I'm going to pick 10 winners. I'm going to pick 10 winners. And make sure you, on it, you can, you can put your Instagram link, your name, how we're going to reach you, and all that. I'm going to pick 10 winners. Put on the comment section the lessons you've learned on this conversation, especially in choosing a co-founder. Because you know, so this, is also, this also applies to choosing a business partner, somebody who work with you, even in the place of employment and all that. Put it, because we've been having different, yeah, I know it's not a one size fit all, but these things he has shared are what has helped certain people build great companies. And I'm sure you want to do the same for yourself, for your business. Put it down in the comment section. I will select 10 and have a gift for these 10. Okay. Let's go on a short break. A lot of people are seeing the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot skyrocketing. And they are asking, how do I make money from this cryptocurrency space? Well, if you want to make money in crypto, I have two answers for you. Number one, get the knowledge. Number two, join a progressive and updated community. With these tools, you will be able to get all the updates and know how to profit from the cryptocurrency market. From the month of July, August 2020, in my community, we began to talk about projects like Polkadot, KSM, and down the lane, uh, even till October, we began to talk about Pose. In short, I called Pose when the price was just 0.26. In short, that was the first time I started buying Pose. We started buying dots 
from the four to five dollar region uh, in the month of february at the date of doing this video the price of poles has gone to five dollars the price of polka dot dot itself has gone to almost thirty dollars and that's how the cryptocurrency market has been giving us money for those who are in our trading group my name is chris annie i'm the founder of daba.school in short the numerous calls and the signals we've given in my community has made people to buy cars landed properties some have built houses people who had almost nothing coming in and doing something amazing in the past one year and that's the reason why I'm also doing this video. In short, in the cryptocurrency industry in Africa, people call me Oracle of Omaha because what Warren Buffett does for stock traders is what I often also do for traders and investors who want to make money and grow wealth in this market. How will you become a part of this signal room? Very simple. All you just have to do is go to www.daba.school or you download the Daba app on Play Store or iOS and get this course, Trade and Make Money course. In short, it's a course by me. Uh, I've been teaching cryptocurrency since 2016. I bought my first Bitcoin at $600. I bought my first Ethereum at $10 till the $30 level. And I can show you how to make wealth in this cryptocurrency market. What are you waiting for? Click the link below get the trade that make money course and it gives you instant access to my private signal room you want community updates you want regular up-to-date industry news industry activity in short when bitcoin was still around the thirty thousand dollar level i updated in my group that with what is going on based on fundamentals analysis on-chain analysis and technical analysis the price of bitcoin is going to 50 to 53,000 level. And we're like, what? And today, we can all see where the price of Bitcoin has gone. You want to be part of this industry? Click the link below and let's make money together. Chrisani right here, Daba.school, all you need for financial freedom and wealth creation. Welcome back. I'm sure you've done the tax. I'm sure. Uh, you've been enjoying this session with my friend Chinon Su, an award-winning entrepreneur, the founder of Sabi Writers. And all through this, why I don't even feel like this program should end because <laughs> it's been a business and startup masterclass, entrepreneurship masterclass for me, and I'm sure it's the same for you. Remember to also subscribe and share this. You can't be watching this and your friend is not watching. So go get everyone, share on the link, Go to your WhatsApp status, go to your WhatsApp group, share the link of this video, let everyone know about this masterclass session. Remember, Chin also is our business leader of the week. And we're using this platform to celebrate people who are doing well in their industry, big, small, whichever, those who are starting small. Which we're celebrating African leaders, people who are impacting their industry. Chin also, I want you to tell us about the writing industry and how... how I, I've seen people talk about social media, social media agency. And you came with Sabi Writer like a bomb. And you've expanded the company and you've grown big in that niche. Tell us about that industry and how, how you're navigating it. I think, um, there's a, I think there's a copy we, we published recently where we said um, there, are, there are close to 1.3 billion stories in Africa and less epithelios. So, uh, you know, the population of Africa is about one, over 1 1.2 billion. And every person, each one of those 1 1.2 billion persons have a story to tell. So you can imagine the market that we're dealing with here. That's huge. So we can tell your story. We can tell the story of, you know, you know am amazing people that work with you in, in Daba Studios. So mm. there's so much that can be done in Africa as far as storytelling is concerned. And storytelling doesn't mean it has to be the typical conventional fictional kind of storytelling. Mm. Writing your personal profile is a storytelling. Mm. Writing your corporate profile is a storytelling. Mm. Writing a proposal for you is a storytelling. Everything is about story, right? So for us, we are looking at a huge gap within the African space that mm. we want to play a big role. Africa and Africans are not telling their story well enough 
and we need to get into that. We're as not soon telling as our stories yeah, well enough. We, we are not, and that is why you know when people, the Western world, when they come with their own narrative, mm. rather than mount on stage and complain, go tell a better story of you. And I love what you know Rwanda is doing, and you know things like that. Mm. If we don't strategically do this and increase the velocity of that storytelling. We'll just keep wilding in our self pity and things. And I've had you know, and, so and that's what Sabirata is trying to solve. And I've had you know, so say things like this. Of course, it's, it's like it's, it's a saying um, if you don't tell your story, no one will. Maybe they will, but they will tell it wrongly for you. Interesting. So you have to tell your story, you have to take, you know, take the, the lead. And, and, and with what you're saying now, um, I'm 1.3 billion people. That means storytelling is a huge skill. Is a massive, is a, is a massive industry that requires, you know, great skill mm. and then your ability to execute. Maybe you share with us, uh, of course, I know it's it, the whole writing thing. Maybe you yeah. share with us some sub skills that <laughs> <laughs> that one would need to survive or thrive in this industry. Strategies or skills and all that. I think when I came into the studio, there's something you said. Um, I don't know if you remember that. You know, so can walk in here and look at the studio and can write a lot of things about it. I tell it. you. So it can even, it, if the audience, if you know, so goes to the comment section now <laughs> and sees your answer, it will pick up both the errors, uh, both the good one, both the challenges and the solution. And I'm telling you, is that good? <laughs> right? So, audience, make sure you're still commenting and you're still sharing this. Go ahead. I, I think if, if, if you say I'm good, I will take it as a compliment. But there's so much where this is coming from. Hmm. So what I'm saying, in, in other words, is that you need to see my people. They are far, far better than me. Interesting. So if I'm a good storyteller, they are way better than me. Interesting. You know? Because I, I, may, may, I don't write as often as I used to when the company started because right now I'm just providing leadership, hmm. you, know, you know, creating new product ideas, forming new strategic relationships that can uh, allow us to expand to more African markets. Mm. Um, so, well, the core writing, yes, I still do writing, but not as when we started. And it's, it's just the normal evolution yes. of any, Entrepreneur, any leader. Business yeah. leader that's true. So, the, there's so much that can be done um, in Africa. One of the skills that will enable your ability to tell stories is your ability to make multiple interpretations about things that are happening around mm. you. A good storyteller doesn't say things in a linear way. Mm. So if I look at this shirt and I only see a white shirt, I can only tell a story about a white shirt, right? Yeah. But if you can give multiple meanings to this, this outfit you are wearing, mm. it, gives, it unlocks new avenues for you to tell new stories about it. So one of the skills that if you want to really develop your ability to tell stories is to look at something and be able to extrapolate different you know, meaning or interpretations from them. And it gives you a large pool of resources mm. to get your story out there. So that's one thing that really works for me. So I can come in here and, you know, the driver that brought me here, I could just look at it from different angles mm -hmm. and then I'll tell the story differently, right? And that's, that's, huge. that's huge. There's somebody that if you tell it from this angle, it will benefit. Mm -hmm. There's somebody else if you tell from this angle, it will also benefit. Yeah. So that gives you an endless pool of opportunity to make impact, mm. To make create wealth and of course to expand your message to the rest of the world so that's just one of the skills that people should have if you're watching this uh, i know there is a crave currently about everybody learning about bitcoin crypto digital skills and different kind of skills but i want to tell you one of the skills that is also helping me and which i'm employing which i'm using in shirts uh, this morning i was talking to my operations team and said we're going to be employing people in this area storytelling script writing Go learn storytelling. If you're watching this, mm -hmm. go learn that skill. Any skill can be learned, okay? Africans, we need to tell our story. There are nations that will tell their story. There are nations, there are companies that need to tell their story. And you are the gap between them and the fulfillment of that, their story being told to the world. So go learn that skill. Because uh, people keep saying there are no jobs, there are no jobs. If you <laughs> learn storytelling as a skill, I tell you, you are, you've set yourself up for big opportunities within your country and outside it. So go learn that skill today. 
I think a typical, a typical example of what storytelling can do in the economic side is take a look at the, the comedy industry. Mm. What is comedy industry in Nigeria? It's simply storytelling. So they, they bring everybody you know, in a hall and they, they start telling you things like, oh, yesterday I was just coming from Oju Elegba. Mm. And, you know, mm. It's storytelling. And then people start laughing, right? Wow. And at the end of it, they get paid. So wow. it's storytelling. Storytelling is multidimensional. Just choose one mm. and play in that space. It could be comedy, it could be writing, it could be dancing, mm. it could be whatever it is that you want to, to just give multiple interpretation about things that happen around you in life. Empowers you to be able to make a difference. Interesting. You know, so currently you have about 20 staff. <laughs> more, than. more than. <laughs> and um, I know you're going, before I ask that, what are the, what are the I, I said I was going to ask it this way. Yeah. What are the um, strategies you want to disclose to us in public <sighs> that has helped you grow as an entrepreneur? <sighs> and has I, I, think, I think the people element for me and for any other entrepreneur that I think that is building something big mm. will always be the hard nut to crack. Mm. Because if you keep this phone on this chair and you go out and come back by 5 p.m., there is high probability that that phone will still be there. Right? True. But when you keep a human and say, please stay, I'm coming, you come back by five, the person will give you good reason why he, ha he or she had to leave that place. Mm. So humans are the toughest part of building anything. Mm. Yes, there are, I'm still learning. There's still so many things I, can, I should and would figure out down the road. But one of the things that have worked for me is I. I don't say it and step back. Mm. I say it and, and I do it. So if I tell you I need commitment, I am committed. Mm. If I tell you I need energy, your boss has, has energy. energy. So whatever I am saying, I have to practically demonstrate it mm. by me being the guinea pig. And then you have to model after that or even take it to the next level. So one of the things that I tell young entrepreneurs who want to find the right talent is you cannot, building a team is not an armchair exercise. Mm. You must get into the trenches. Mm. Sometimes it may require your own discomfort. There are times I've actually taken pay cuts or not taken salary at all mm. just to save that money to find the right person and being able to pay that person. So leaders have to understand that. And sometimes one of the reasons why we don't understand that is because we don't understand how to play the long game. Mm. We're short-sighted. We're thinking about, oh, if I, if I do this, oh, it's going to, what? Come on, you're building a great company. That the is future. going to be 50 years, 100 years. So what, what does it cost you to sacrifice today to be able to achieve that? So one of the things that have worked for me is being able to demonstrate, not just in theory, but in practice, that which I require from my people. If I want, if I want you to work extra hours, I have to work extra hours. True. Yeah. On the comment section, again, don't forget, I put two lessons here that has helped you know, so, so this is another business class again. <laughs> Number one, he's committed to whatever he's saying, he executes it. He's, he's an executioner. He's somebody who executes. And there's one which he said, and he didn't say it directly, <laughs> he's a long-term thinker. Anytime I see his post on Facebook, he's telling you why we should be building companies that will last 50 years, 100 years. We should be thinking about the next 10 years. And in business, you see, there's this rush. Everybody wants to hammer, wants to make the money. It's good. You want to make your million dollars and all that. Very, very good. You have a good ambition. But are you a long-time thinker? Because even if you make the 1 million today or the 10 million US dollars today and you're not a long-time thinker, it will fade. It will go. Five years down the line, you're back to the market asking investors for money. You're back in again saying, how do I start again? But if you're a long-term thinker, it will help you in execution. It will help you in the decisions you're making today. You know, so it has been an exciting time. Thank and um, I don't even feel like this thing should even end. <laughs> but tell us, where is Sabi Writers going to? Wow. Okay, Sabi Writers has a 10-year plan and also a 5-year plan. In the next 10 years, we're, which, of course, we already started, um, we're looking at creating at least a 1,000 jobs across Africa. I keep hearing you say that it, all it, the time. I, I just have to. I, it's burning. It, it, see, let me tell you. <laughs> The commit you cannot be committed to a certain mission and your vocabulary is not impacted. Mm. It's not possible. So you meet Asha. Asha is always talking about music. Yes. If I see you every time I come to your, you are talking about crypto, right? 
So when, if you want to see somebody that is committed to a tax or a mm. mission, check their vo vocabulary. Mm. I'm not saying that's the only thing that you need yeah. to check, but one of the things that you know, changes or is strengthening is their vocabulary. Mm. So I'll keep saying that. Yes. It has not happened, but it will happen. It will. So that's, one, that's our 10-year plan, to be able to create, because there are so many young talents across Africa. Our unemployment rate as at now is over 33 percent, which is, hu is huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's alarming. It's alarming. So there are so many young people across Africa who need somebody or a platform to just give them a chance. Um, um, the society that I grew up in gave me a chance. Mm. I'm not there yet, mm. but I can imagine. I, I think there was a day I was online and I read a story about a young writer somewhere in the, in the eastern part of Nigeria that had always had passion to write. He kept on submitting his written works in dif on different platforms, but he kept on rejecting until there was this rejection that was the last straw that broke the camera's back. Mm. And then he went on Facebook and he posted that he's tired. Quite a long story short, he killed himself, he committed suicide. Yeah. And one day I sat in my house and I was asking myself a question. I said, if Sabi writers had given this guy a platform, wow. would he have committed suicide? Wow. And I believe the answer is no. Mm. So I'm on a mission with my team to create more Sabi writers across Africa, to give young writers, editors, designers, creatives the platform to not only live their dreams, but to make it, you know, an impact in the world. So it's a huge tax. I like started, this mission. And I am so excited about the journey. I, I like this mission. Yeah. Uh, aside the old Sabi writers thing, um, I know you're a serial You're an <laughs> investor. You're a startup investor. <laughs> And um, <laughs> what other niches are you looking at in the um, business world? Yeah, yeah, I, I have other things I, I've invested in uh, within, you know, eventually, I don't want to reveal our strategy. You know, <laughs> but, but eventually, you know, Sabi writers will be congregating at a certain, you know, level and just allow me to say it that way. But okay. for now, we're keeping our strategy intact. Interesting. But we are investing in another part of the value chain, mm. right? But we deliberately don't put that out there so that we don't distract the market mm. as far as Sabi Writer's because brand is concerned. So we are singular in our brand communication, but at, at the right time, we'll be able to show out you know, other things that we're working on. You know, in December, um, I had, was it January, I met um, Nas Daily. Going back to the thing you talked about, you being vocal about your mission. And um, every time Nas Daily is telling me, Chris, Everything that I had. They, some people told me to come and invest in Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a board member in one of their companies, but everything about me is just video making, video making. And he told me something. He said, Chris, with what you're doing at Daba, go, if you impact 10% of 1 billion people is 100 million. Then 1% of 1 billion should be 10 million people. You can take Africa just impacting 10 million people. Mm. And so, while you were talking, I look forward to the day we're going to have a storytelling course on Daba. I look forward <laughs> to that day. I look forward to that day we could use because we now at Daba, uh, we, we, want to, we want to equip millions of people across the world. Of course, starting from Africa. In short, the main goal is that because the level of poverty and unemployment, so Sabi Raita is tackling its own and Daba is also using education, or digital skill to empower people because where I am today now, I'm not there yet, but where I am today now is a result of having that skill in the digital world. And knowing how the whole world is, the internet is the biggest economy in the world. This is what Daba wants to help people do. This is what Daba is helping people do. So I look forward to the day. We've started with a talk show. We've started with a, with a meeting like this. Mm. Uh, we want to see poverty out of Africa. We want to see unemployment out of Africa. We don't want that story which also shared about a guy who was submitting his writing, uh, this thing, applications, having applications everywhere, and this guy couldn't get a job. We know that one day, Sabi Raita will be employing people like this in different parts of Africa. And that vision is still strong. And Chinoso, to be honest, I celebrate you. Thank you. I celebrate the I celebrate it too. I celebrate Man, the fact that you're not doing you, bad. You bootstrapped you, 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 you <laughs> this. Okay. You're playing in a niche, uh, a niche that is not so popular, okay? And you are creating a different part of it. So mm. from us, from me, the team at Daba, we've talked about it, I and my wife, we've talked about it, and like, no, 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 this niche is, 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 is huge. It's your, your, your creativity there is top-notch, okay? You. So 
Thank you once again for honoring our invitation to be on Daba TV. Um, when we grow, one day I'll tell you, see, yeah, no matter how big Sabi writer is, you know, there's a time he also came to Daba TV <laughs> to have an interview. Of with course, us. That Daba will also be big, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so, and then we'll celebrate uh, this journey uh, together. Uh, yeah. Please, on the comment section, don't forget to share, don't forget to write. And you can follow Chin on and his work on Facebook. You can see his, um, you can see the picture. You can go to Chin on you see his work on Facebook. You can also follow Sabi Writers. You can see the details information on the screen. And of course, if you want to write your next book, the next profile for your company, whatever, Sabi Writer makes it easy. I like the word, we Sabi Write. <laughs> Period. Simple. So, if you're finding it difficult to write that next book, you have the dream, you have the inspiration, you're finding it, uh, don't worry, you're not a lazy author, okay? You're not a lazy author. Do the marketing, they do the writing for you. They even do the part of even publishing the same book for you. So, go make that dream happen. Remember, uh, one of the things this is, one of the things you will do before you leave the world, okay? Plant a tree, write a book, go on vacation and all that. You want to write that book and make that dream come reality? Just go to Sabi Writers. Go, their website is showing on your screen. Their social media handle is showing on your screen. And you can get all the best from them. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. And remember to always share. I'm still your host, Chris Annie. Till I come your way next time, have a successful week. <laughs>